Welcome back to the backend masterclass. In the last lecture, we have learned how to write migration script to create the database schema for our simple bank project. Today, we will learn how to write Golang code to perform CRUD operations on the database. Okay, so what is CRUD? Well, there are four basic operations. C stands for create or insert new records to the database. R is for read, which means retrieving the records from the database. U is update, to change the content of the record. And D is delete, to remove the record from the database. There are several ways to implement CRUD operations in Golang. The first one is to use the low-level standard library, database SQL package. As you can see in this example, we just use the query row context function and pass in the raw SQL query and some parameters. Then we scan the result into target variables. The main advantage of this approach is it runs very fast and writing code is pretty straightforward. However, its downside is we have to manually map the SQL fields to variables, which is quite boring and easy to make mistakes. If somehow the order of the variables doesn't match, or if we forget to pass some argument to the function call, the errors will only show up at runtime. Another approach is to use GOM which is a high-level object relational mapping library for Golang. It is super convenient to use because all CRUD operations are already implemented. So our production code will be very short as we only need to declare the models and call the functions that GOM provided. As you can see in this example code, we have the new record and create function for the record creation and several functions for retrieving the data, such as first, take, last find it looks pretty cool but the problem is we must learn how to write queries using gom's provided functions it will be annoying if we don't know which functions to use especially when we have some complex queries that require joining tables we have to learn how to declare associations tags to make gom understand the relationships between tables so that it can generate the correct sql query for me, I prefer writing the SQL query by myself. It's more flexible, and I have a complete control of what I want the database to do. One major concern when using GOM is that it runs very slowly when the traffic is high. There are some benchmarks on the internet, which shows that GOM can run 3 to 5 times slower than the standard library. Because of this, many people are switching to a middleway approach, which is using SQLX library. It runs nearly as fast as a standard library, and it's very easy to use. The fields mapping are done via either the query text or struct text. It provides some functions like select or struct scan, which will automatically scan the result into the struct field, so we don't have to do the mapping manually like in the database SQL package. This will help to shorten the code and reduce potential mistakes. However, the code that we have to write is still quite long, and any errors in the query will only be caught at runtime. So, is there any better way? The answer is SQL C. It runs very fast, just like database SQL, and it's super easy to use. The most exciting thing is, we just need to write SQL queries, then the Golang CRUD code will be automatically generated for us. As you can see in this example, we simply pass the DB schema and the SQL queries to SQL C. Each query have one command on top of it to tell SQL C to generate the correct function signature. Then SQL C will generate idiomatic Golang code, which uses the standard database SQL library. And because SQL C processes the SQL queries to understand what it does in order to generate the code for us, so any errors will be caught and report right away. Sounds amazing, right? The only issues that I found in SQL C is that, at the moment, it only fully supports Postgres. My SQL is still experimental. So if you're using Postgres in your project, I think SQL C is the right tool to use. Otherwise, I would suggest to stick with SQL X. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to install and use SQL C to generate CRUD code for a simple bank project. First, we go to sqlc.dev and click on this link 
to open its GitHub page. Then search for installation. I'm on a Mac, so I will use Homebrew. Let's copy this brew install command and run it in the terminal. OK, SQL C is now installed. We can run SQL C version to see what version it is running. In my case, it's version 1.4. Let's run SQL C help to learn how to use it. First, we have the compile command to check the SQL syntax and type errors. Then the most important command is generate. It will do both error checking and generating Golang codes from SQL queries for us. We also have the init command to create an empty sqlc.yaml setting file. Now I'm going to go to the simple bank project folder that we've been working on in previous lectures. Run sqlc init and open it with Visual Studio Code. Okay, here we can see the sql.yaml file. Right now it's kind of empty. So let's go back to the sqlc github page. Select branch with tag 1.4 and search for settings. Here's the list of settings that we can config. Let's copy it and paste it to the sqlc.yaml file. We can tell sqlc to generate multiple Go packages. But to be simple, I'm just gonna use one single package for now. The name option here is to tell sqlc what is the name of the Go package that will be generated. I think db is a good package name. Next, we have to specify the path to the folder to store the generated Golang code. I'm going to create a new folder, SQL C, inside the DB folder and change this string to dot slash DB slash SQL C. Then we have the queries options to tell SQL C where to look for the SQL query files. Let's create a new folder query inside the DB folder. Then change this value to dot slash DB slash query. Similarly, this schema option should point to the folder containing the database schema or migration files. In our case, it is dot slash db slash migration. The next option is engine to tell SQL C what database engine we would like to use. We are using PostgreSQL for our simple bank project. If you want to experiment with MySQL, you can change this value to MySQL instead. We will set the image JSON text to true because we want SQL C to add JSON text to the generated struct. The image prepared queries tell SQL C to generate code that work with prepared statement. At the moment, we don't need to optimize performance yet, so let's set this to false to make it simple. Then the image interface option to tell SQL C to generate querier interface for the generated package. It might be useful later if we want to mock the database for testing higher level function. For now, let's just set it to false. The final option is emit exact table names. By default, this value is false. SQL C will try to singularize the table name to use as the model struct name. For example, accounts table name will become account struct without ads. If you set this option to true, the struct name will be account with an S instead. I think singular name is better because one object of type account in plural form might be confused at multiple objects. Okay, now let's open the terminal and run SQL C generate. We have an error because there are no queries in the query folder yet. We will write the queries in a moment. For now, let's add a new SQL C command to the make file it will help our teammate to easily find all commands that can be used for development in one place. Okay, it's working. So now let's write our first SQL query to create an account. I'm going to create a new account.sql file inside the query folder. Then go back to the SQL C GitHub page and search for getting started. Here we see a few examples of how the SQL query should look like. Let's copy this create author command and paste it to our account.sql file. It's just a basic insert query. The only special thing is the comment on top of it. This comment will instruct SQL C how to generate the Golang function signature for this query. In our case, the name of the function will be create account. 
and it should return one single account object. So we have the one label here. Then the SQL query is insert into account. Let's take a look at the schema. We don't need to provide the ID because it's an auto increment column. Every time a new record is inserted, the DB will automatically increase the account ID sequence number and use it at the value of the ID column. The created column will also be automatically filled with the default value, which is the time when the record is created. So we only need to provide values for the owner, balance and currency. There are three columns, so we need to pass three arguments into the values clause. Finally, the returning star clause is used to tell PostgreSQL to return the value of all columns after inserting the record into the account table. This is very important because after the account is created, we will always want to return its ID to the client. Alright, now let's open the terminal and run make secrecy. No errors. Now get back to Visual Studio Code. In the DB secrecy folder, we can see three new generated files. The first one is models.go. This file contains the struct definition of three models, account, entry, and transfer. They all have JSON tags because we are setting image JSON tags to true in sequency.yaml. The amount field of entry and transfer struct also has a comment on top because we added them in the database schema definition in the previous lectures. The second file is db.go. This file contains the dbtx interface. It defines four common methods that both SQL DB and SQL transaction object has. This allows us to freely use either a DB or a transaction to execute a query. As you can see here, the new function takes a dbtx as input and returns a queries object. So we can pass in either a sql.db or sql.tx object. Depends on whether we want to execute just one single query or a set of multiple queries within a transaction. There's also a method with tx, which allows a queries instance to be associated with a transaction. We will learn more about this in another lecture about transaction. Now let's take a look at the account.sql.go file. The package name is db as we defined in the sql.c.yaml file. At the top, we can see the create account sql query. It looks almost the same as the one we've written in the account.sql file, except for the return clause. sql.c has replaced return star with the name of all columns explicitly. This makes the query clearer and avoid scanning values in incorrect order. Then we have the create account param struct, which contains all columns that we want to set when we create a new account. The create account function is defined as a method of the queries object. It has this name because we have instructed sql.c with the comment in our sql query. This function takes the context and a create account params object as input and it returns an account model object or an error. Visual Studio Code is showing some red lines here because we haven't initialized the module for our project yet. Let's open the terminal and run go mode init. The module name is github.com slash techschool slash simplebank. Okay, the go.mod file is generated for us. Let's run go mode tidy to install any dependencies. Looks like our current code don't use any external library yet. Alright, now get back to the account.sql.go file. All the red lines are gone. In the createAccount function, we call query row context to execute the createAccountSQL query. This function belongs to the dbtx interface that we've seen before. We pass in the context, the query, and three arguments, owner, balance, and currency. The function returns the row object that we can use to scan the value of each column into correct variables. This is a basic code that we often have to write manually if we use a standard database SQL library. But how cool it is to have it automatically generated for us. Awesome, right? 
One more amazing thing about SQL C is it checks the SQL query syntax before generating the code. So here, if I try to remove the third argument in the query and run make SQL C again, an error is reported. Insert has more target columns than expressions. Because of this, if SQL C successfully generates the code, we can be confident that there's no silly mistake in all SQL queries. One important thing when working with SQL C is, we should not modify the content of the generated files, because every time we run make SQL C, all of those files will be regenerated, and our changes will be lost. So make sure to create new files if you want to add more code to the DB package. All right, now we know how to create records in the database. Let's move to the next operation, read. In this example, there are two basic data retrieval queries, get and list. Let's copy them to our account.sql file. The get query is used to get one account record by ID. So I'm gonna change this name to get account. And the query will be select from account where id equals to the first input argument. We use limit one here because we just want to select one single record. The next operation is list account. It will return multiple account records. So we use the many label here. Similar to the get query, we select from account table, then order the record by their IDs. Because there can be a lot of accounts in the database, we should not select all of them at once. Instead, we do pagination. So we use limit to set the number of rows we want to get, and use offset to tell Postgres to skip this many rows before starting to return the result. And that's it. Now let's run make SQL C to regenerate the code. Then open the account.sql.go file. Here we go, the get account and list account functions are generated. Just like before, SQL C has replaced select star with explicit column names for us. The get account function just take a context and an ID as input. And inside, it just calls query row context with the raw SQL query and the account ID. It scans the row into an account object and return it to the caller. Pretty simple. The list account function is a little bit more complex. It takes a context, a limit, and offset parameters as input, and returns a list of account objects. Inside, it calls query context. Pass in the list account query, together with the limit and offset. This function returns a rows object. It works like an iterator which allows us to run through the records one by one and scan each record into an account object, open it to the list of items, and finally close the rows to avoid leaking DB connection. We also check if there are any errors or not before returning the items to the caller. The codes look quite long, but easy to understand. The bottom line is, it runs very fast, and we don't have to worry about making silly mistakes in the code because SQL C already guarantees that the generated code will work perfectly. Okay, let's move to the next operation, update. Here it is. Let's copy this code to our account.sql file and change the function name to update account. Here we use a new label, exec, because this command doesn't return any data. It just updates one row in the database. Let's change this query to update account. And let's say we only allow updating the account balance. The account owner and currency should not be changed. We use a where clause to specify the ID of the account we want to update. And that's it. Now run make SQL C in the terminal to regenerate the code. Voila, we have the update account function. It takes a context the account ID and balance parameters as input. All it does is calling exact context with the query and input argument, then return the error to the caller. Sometimes it's useful to have the updated account object being returned as well. In that case, we can change this exact label to one, 
and add a returning star at the end of this update query, then regenerate the code. Now the SQL query has changed, and the update account function is returning the updated account together with the error. Cool. The last operation is delete. It's even simpler than update. Let's copy this example query and change the function name to delete account. I don't want Postgres to return the deleted record, so let's keep this exact label. Then change the table name to account and regenerate the code. Oops, we have an error. That's because I mistyped the table name. It should be account with an S. Now make SQL C again. Successful. And we have the delete account function in the code. So basically, we have learned how to generate a full CRUD operations for our account table. You can try to do the same thing for the two remaining tables, entries and transfers by yourself as an exercise. I will push the code to GitHub and put the link in the description so that you can have a reference in case you want to take a look. And that's it for today's lecture. Thanks a lot for watching. See you guys in the next one.